Hello folks, Phil Gallagher of 3 Benny U here for another vintage video. It's been a little while and I'm super excited. Uh, this video is sponsored in part by Top Decked and we'll take a look at them after round one. So this deck list comes from MTGO user Wessel from Germany, um, who was going to donate to play this deck. And they sent me an email about this and I just said, this one's on the house. I absolutely need to just play this deck list right now. Uh, I'm super pumped about it. Um, in essence, the deck is built around cards like Outland Liberator that are just very good within the context of Vintage. So this is kind of a Quasali Pride Mage on the front side, but on the back side, whenever it attacks, destroy target artifact or enchantment defending player controls. Now, what is the Vintage format absolutely full of? Artifacts. Um, even most decks that aren't really playing artifacts in the same way that something like Workshops is still have things like a bunch of, of Moxen. And so having a rec recurring way to destroy artifacts is super good. And a lot of the other stuff that's going on here are just like my favorite sorts of things to do in Vintage. Like play sweet hate bears that shut down games. In the 75 here, we have a playset of Archon of Ameria. We have a playset of Thalia. We have a playset of Collector Oof in the sideboard. Uh, and we have Force of Vigors to just like additionally just continue to hate on artifacts. Um, we also have a couple of snowball -y threats. Um, so Luminarch Aspirant is a card that's near and dear to my heart. It's super good in Vintage. It allows your other hate bears to kind of get bigger, get out of range of some removal, and otherwise just be standalone threats. And interestingly, and this is something I haven't seen a lot of in Vintage, it also just has Stoneforge Mystic. It has Stoneforge Mystic to get you uh, Cauldra most of the time, I imagine, but it also just straight up has a sword, uh, which honestly, I don't know that I've ever played a sword in Vintage, uh, so that's kind of cool. Uh, we've picked Feast and Famine here so that uh, we can get the discard and also untap our lands. We are sometimes going to want to cast multiple spells to transform this thing, I suppose. Well, actually, I guess that's not true, right? So, hmm. Yeah, I guess the flip flip flopping back and forth isn't all that bad. When it is night, though, um, and we just like play this as an immediate three three that is going to start nuking artifacts, uh, that is going to be super dope. Uh, as far as the rest of the deck goes, we have a couple of random restricted cards like Chalice of the Void to kind of smooth things out, and Once Upon a Time is sort of our cantrip to make our opening hands better. I cannot overstate how good Archon of Ameria is in Vintage. Uh, this card is pretty damning, and it's just a huge tempo blow. Um, something else that doesn't see a lot of play in Vintage is an actual factual mana dork. Noble Hierarch is trying to make it so that we can get to this turn to Archon uh, as frequently as possible. Turn 1 Archon is even better, but you can't always get that. As far as our sideboard goes, we have very dedicated hate. We have Containment Priests for sort of our bizarre matchups. We have Collector Oof for our artifact matchups. And we have things like Mirror and Crusader uh, and maybe like a Pithing Needle for things like Bug. I am obviously super excited to play this one. This uh, absolutely got jumped to the front of the queue when I saw it happen. And Eternal Weekend is coming up. Uh, you know, if you're playing in Eternal Weekend, you know, give me a give me a shout out. Tell me what you're playing. Tell me that you're excited about the format because I just love hearing like people talk uh, about vintage. Uh, we last week on the Eternal Glory podcast, uh, you know, we kind of had a somber week. We were talking about Eternal Weekend for Legacy and we were all sad. And then we started talking about vintage and everybody got fired up. Anyway, if you're new here, consider subscribing for Legacy Modern and Vintage content on the regular. And if you are a regular, throw me a like before we get started. It's the easiest way to support my content for free. And uh, rich vintage fans out there, just saying, if you donate for more vintage, I would love to play it. Let's battle. All right, uh, so let's look at my opening hand here. Uh, okay, I have a lot of mana on turn one. Uh, so I have four mana available to me on turn one. I do not have green mana, so two of the cards in my hand are dead. I can do a turn one Thalia, Heretic, Athar, and Mox Jet, followed by turn two Chalice. Or I can play Chalice on zero on turn one and Thalia Heretic Athar. Um, this is probably a keep. I don't know my mana base well enough to know like how many actual outs to this like drawing green mana I have. I think it's probably okay. Uh, so let's do all this. I'll Chalice. I will just do this on zero blind and stop my opponent's Moxen. I think stopping my opponent's Moxen while also getting... Thalia Heretic Athar down on turn one is pretty gross. Oh, that hot damn. 
All right, uh, deck confirmed good. Turn one win. Okay. Um, how sideboard? What do? I I have basically literal zero information here, right? So all all I know is like on the play, I went a chalice into a crippling hate bear, and my opponent died. I don't know if I'm supposed to sideboard anything. I I could like go for something like some collector oofs, and. There's a good portion of the time where, like, that just totally works out fine. Uh, what is the creature type of this, by the way, while I'm thinking about it for Kevin? Human, 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 not human, not human. This is an Archon, and this is a Core Artificer. Okay. I don't hate boarding out a Sword of Feast and Famine when I don't know what my opponent is playing for a Collector Oof. I think that's all I'm going to do. I, d I don't think I want to hedge more strongly than just that. Like, it's it's possible I should board up more Collector Oofs or Force of Vigors, or maybe, like, swap Force of Vigors for Collector Oof. Oh, this is an interesting hand. This is turn one Duder, followed by Wasteland Wasteland. Um, It's, like, not bad. Or I just, like, Wasteland Wasteland and then eventually play a dude. Force of Vigor for Moxen if I go that route. This hand is medium, but I think I'm going to keep it. I I don't know how far down the artifact rabbit hole my opponent is. Oh, holy shit. Another wasteland. Dope. All right. So I'll play a mox. I will play my green producing land. And I will play my uh, Bazali pride mage friend. Oh, it's so cute. It's bringing a little wolf from a trap. And then you look in the second picture and uh, it's a little angrier. No, I dig this. Okay, that that resolves. But now it is day, and it becomes night if a player casts no spell during their own turn. Okay, cool. And now I just back this up with, like, triple wasteland. A long pause for my opponent. What does that mean within the context of vintage? So like, normally it's Brainstorm and Legacy that they're thinking about. Um, but in vintage... Like, there's one brainstorm, so it starts to become things like Ancestral a little bit more frequently. Well, my opponent probably would have, like, main-phased an Ancestral to play around all my BS and potentially play out some Mox, and so it's a little hard to say. Okay, there's a Wasteland target. That's that's what that is. Okay. Two red mana. Okay, yeah, Ancient Grud my Moxen? Absolutely. I do not care about that. Uh, also, I get to take my opponent off of blue mana. Uh, which is dope. I'll just blow that up. I will get my two damage in, and then I didn't cast a spell, uh, so it becomes night. Yeah, yeah. Just get, just get another island. I got wastelands for days. All right, demonic tutor, slightly scary. I don't actually know what my opponent is playing yet. I'm not super super current on vintage. All right, um, let's continue to go after the blue sources. Blue cards are good in vintage. And uh, I'll hit you for three. I'm going to assume that my opponent tutored for something like an Ancestral. There it is. That's okay. Like, I don't know how many blue sources you have left in your deck. Aw. That's all right. Like, I will, I will keep hitting blue mana. Sure. Oh, Ragavan. Do not like that. Uh, I don't think I want a two for one for a Mox Ruby. Uh, Cauldra Complete is not really what I'm looking for. I will go ahead and just continue to hit my opponent's blue sources. This plan becomes worse once this Ragavan is in play. Um, but I have a ton of creatures that I can use to just get rid of this. Or at least neuter it a bit. So I will take my two here. I could consider using Force of Vigor to get rid of Mox Ruby and this treasure. Uh, I did not get the end of combat stop that I wanted. thought I was going to get priority in damage after that trigger resolved, but I did not. A little strange. Yeah, because I wanted... Yep, okay. No big deal, I guess. I mean, I mean, it, it is a big deal. Like, my opponent getting a Luminarch Aspirant and continuing to grow this thing uh, super sucks for me. Um, yep. All right. Say la vie. Um, life's pretty bad now. Because my opponent just has a scaling threat here. 
uh, and I've kind of flooded out. That's three, six, seven lands. And eh. sure. So Luminar Gasparant grows the Ragavan, just turning it into an increasingly difficult threat to deal with. I have to set a stop here if I want to answer the Ragavan thing. Oh, I see. I don't have combat damage stop on my opponent's turn. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I guess I just have to do this so my opponent doesn't get another Aspirant. Because uh, I'm not going to beat that. Okay, Brainstorm's fine. Um, so it seems like we are playing against a just Grixis Ragavan deck. This Crusader I have in the sideboard is probably going to come in. I think I just ended up keeping a hand that had a decent plan, but, like, I wastelanded three of my opponent's blue sources, and it was not enough. Um, Collector Oof is not actually all that great. It's not going to beat out this. I I think at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and concede and sideboard properly. I definitely want this back in, and some of this artifact-based stuff is not anywhere near as good as I thought it was. I'll play these Mirror Crusaders to kind of round out my stuff, um, and then probably call it good. Um, notably, I don't have anything like Source of Plowshares, Path to Exile, anything like that to actually take creatures off the board. I guess my plan is just kind of like go through rather than stop stuff. Like, Swords should allow me to get through most Vintage Threats, and Alder don't give a fuck, let's be real. Um, yeah, this is fine. I think if I keep a hand with a little bit more gas or... Um, an earlier lock piece that's that's acceptable okay um this has a single land uh this is not gonna cut it by vintage standards um how's this hand this hand plays a turn one uncounterable stoneforge mystic and puts a aldra into play on turn two uh, this is not crazy a little weird it's probably fine aldra is indestructible my opponent's answer to it is going to be ancient grudge yeah i think i'm good with this i'll keep this and pitch this noble hierarch. Let's go Mox. Do Cavern on Artificer. And this gives me Uncounterable Stoneforge Mystic. Yes. And I'll pick up Cauldra. So now it's on my opponent to just naturally have a Lightning Bolt in their hand. And I'm not actually expecting them to have that many copies of that. Yeah, you can go Taxi and Probe. That's fine. I'm, I'm not about secrets here. Okay. Mox. And a Badlands, so they could have the Bolt. It's a Bob. So I, I think I'm just going to go ham on my opponent's life total rather than try to waste land here. So this is white. I guess I'll do this one. Put in Cauldra. Crash in for five. Um, this Cauldra plus my opponent's Dark Confidant is going to put an exceptional amount of hurt on my opponent's life total quickly. I'm also going to back that up with Wasteland and Aspirant. Um, this is going to go well. Um, notably, just in case someone comes after me in the comments asking me why I didn't play Horizon Canopy on 1 so I could activate Stoneforge and Wasteland on 2, I don't want to just like lose this game because I didn't play around a Force of Will. Um, that's basically where I'm at with that decision. And on that note, in these sorts of decks, the white Mox, Mox Pearl, is just so, so much better than all the other Mox and uh, obvious statement of, like, if I could play more copies of it, I would in a heartbeat. Alright, seeing some movement from the opponent. Nope, JK. Oh, there it is. So that is a ponder. I don't know what all my opponent is actually going to have that gets rid of this germ token once it's in play. Um, in case you're not familiar with the text here, like, Cauldra is indestructible. And the equipped creature also has indestructible. So my opponent needs some sort of like bounce effect, some sort of like echoing truth sort of thing. Okay. What do you have? A bolt? Nope. Just play the... Okay, a demonic tutor. If they have something, they get to find it. The question is, do I blow up their black source or like their second blue mana? I think I go after the badlands with wasteland. So, unless my draw changes something, I think my current plan is Wasteland Badlands play. Oh, All right. That's interesting. I am no longer sure if I am supposed to play Aspirant pre-combat. There's worlds where I'm supposed to, like, 
No, I guess if my opponent has a bounce spell, they bounce the germ, not the cauldra. Yeah, okay. Do I play wasteland or do I play double aspirant? Double aspirant might be better than wasteland. Because if my opponent has a black lotus, this no longer actually knocks them off a color. Let's cast the first one and see what, if anything, happens. Okay, it resolves. I am very unsure about my second play. I think I am just going to Wasteland, though. I'll just continue to attack the mana of the other color here. Go ahead and put this on Stoneforge. And then crash in with both my creatures. I just want this Stoneforge to be able to attack in safely through a Bob. Okay, that's no blocks from my opponent. They they just ate all of that damage. All right, uh, they have gone to three, uh, revealing a Deathrite Shaman. So now what? You demonic tutored last turn, so you can potentially get something that answers my Aldra in some way. If there is something available in your deck that's boarded in that can do that, Force of Vigor maybe. Oh, and Oko. Okay. Um, is that going to be good enough? I don't know that that's going to be good enough. I have so much power on board already. Aldra will be a lethal threat. Stoneforge is a lethal threat if I put two, put a counter on it. Time walk would be bad. Okay, a merchant scroll. That's uh, just getting a brainstorm. That's no big deal. Okay. Um, okay, so I think I'll start here. And play an Aspirant. Hope it doesn't get countered. Okay, it does get countered. Um, this does mean, though, that I now have three different lethal threats. I just put a counter on Aspirant, and then my opponent needs to have Lightning Bolt as one of the three cards remaining in their hand. I know that they have a Dark Confidant and a Brainstorm, so, that, so their one card has to be a Lightning Bolt, or they are dead. I'll just put the counter on the Aspirant itself. Opponent doesn't really have great blocks here. All right, attack you. All right, looks like my opponent has their blocks. Is Lightning Bolt your last card? Oh shit, Lightning Bolt is their last card. Sure. All right, that's not great for me. Um, It's really awkward for me to try and cash in this Horizon Canopy now. I'm not going to do that. My opponent might stabilize it too. Oko is a hell of a drug. The reason why it's awkward for me to cash this in is my opponent has Wasteland. Yeah, that's fine. So if I cash in this Rising Canopy trying to draw a card, and my opponent just like Wastelands by one remaining true white source, it's super not good for me. Okay, that's fine. Alright, there is a fetch putting my opponent to one. That doesn't super matter, because like my opponent has blockers, my opponent has food potentially. Okay, they are going for the food. And then playing a Bob. Okay, that's fine. Again, it's super awkward for me to cash in this Horizon Canopy. I don't think I can do it at the end step, because then I lose this Horizon Canopy. I think I just have to untap and then do it there if I want. That's actually sort of interesting, right? I think I'm just going to force this activation. Like, if my opponent wants to blow up my Cavern of Souls, that's fine. Or they can eat the food, whatever. Okay, my... Alright, I traded Wasteland for Wasteland. My opponent wants the life. I am good with that. I'll now cycle this. Draw on another Horizon Canopy, unfortunately. I'll just go ahead and send this at them directly. Bon, I'll take two, go back to two. Oh, nope. I'll block with the Bob instead, that's fine. Okay, they're going for Moxon. Alright, I am going to go ahead and cycle this end of turn. Just need to get out of mana sources and into actual cards that do something. That is an actual card that does something. That's great. Um, so let's play this. Do one of these. I guess I put my counter here. Three damage to Oko still lets an exchange happen. I think I'm just going to knock my opponent to one here. And my opponent accepts. My opponent has a bunch of lines available to them with this Oko. But I think if I try to fight the loyalty on this thing when I'm so low on resources, I'm not actually super likely to win that battle. Okay, so my opponent takes my Aspirant. They'll put a counter on their Mox Idiot. It's a 4-4. And I'll uh, continue to cycle and try to look for live cards. A okay, Once Upon a Time. I do not have real green mana to cast that, actually. Uh, so I guess I'm just chilling for a little while. 
Alright. Take your food. Um, honestly, I'm probably gonna start playing towards a timeout. I'm up over five minutes of clock. I think I'll just kind of drag this one on and try to time my opponent out in game three. Their deck does not seem to be particularly fast, and they're not making decisions quickly. It's unexciting, but I think that's the direction that this game is going. Ooh, turn off auto yields. I can bounce that. I have a Caracas in play. That was, that was the one place you should not have put that. Uh, that is uncounterable. Uh, that's an end of turn batter skull for me. I also have Sword of Feast and Famine. I, I guess I could just like play that, hold it in hand, and then go for an equip next turn, but the Luminarch Aspirant gets a block on it still. Yeah, my opponent having one of my creatures here is pretty annoying. Alright. Alright, so here's my Stoneforge. I could just cast this using Mana Crypt. Like, I could get Sword, straight up just cast it, equip it, force the Aspirant to die. Yeah, I, I actually don't hate that. Mana Crypt is, like, a little risky here. But my opponent would have to have blue card plus Force of Will as their remaining two cards. I know Ragavan is one of their cards. Okay. I guess that technically stops me as well. Slightly unexpected and annoying, um, but it is what it is. Now this is just going to get elked, unfortunately, and my plan of taking out Aspirant fails. Okay, so now I have another elk. Um, yeah, actually, there's a couple of worlds here where I just attack multiple times, and it's super bad for my opponent. Okay, not if they have a bob. That bob can kill them, though. Like, there's Okos in my opponent's deck. There's very much worlds where my opponent dies for playing out that bob. Okay, sure. I'll do the end step bounce, the Ragavan again. Now I just need to like not die to my own mana crypt. I lost that flip. I think I want to ask this once upon a time at the cost of some of my life. And potentially. Um, Noble Hierarch's super awkward, right? Because I can't actually play it this turn because green mana. Hierarch next turn lets me attack with a 4-5. Um, so my opponent will have to put an Aspirant counter on Mox Ruby or block with multiple bodies. I'm not sure if that's better than Cavernous Souls and just making something else uncounterable, but I am going to go ahead and just take this. Alright, Bob triggers. Fatal push. Um, that is extremely good here. Alright, opponent going for food. See where this Aspirant counter is going to end up. Alright, on Aspirant itself. I kind of feel like at some point my opponent needs to attack. Unless my mana flip rolls are just exceptionally unlucky. Um, yeah, my mana's awkward here. I'm going to go two mana for Thalia before I do anything else. It's a little awkward that I can't like protect this from Fatal Push. I will play my Noble Hierarch. And I'll see if I get to go to combat. I do. Okay, so I can attack with a 4-5. Um, and I can essentially trade Mox Ruby for Stoneforge. I think I'm fine with that. Get my Noble Hierarch trigger. I also may just trade the Fatal Push for it here. Okay, so do I want to kill the Bob or the Mox Ruby? I think I want to kill the Mox Ruby, oddly enough. The Bob feeds my opponent's cards, but I think the larger body is what I care about right now, like given that I have this Noble Hierarch. All right, so my opponent goes for some food. They tapped in a way so that they can't Fatal Push. All right, they have a Lightning Bolt as well. Bob reveals a Dak Faden. They can take my Mana Crypt. I would be good with that. This also just gives my opponent more stuff to do, like, with their turns and time. That's something that favors me. I think my opponent needs to try to turn the corner on this game soon if they, like, are going to have any chance of not timing out. Yeah, sure. Okay. Here's a plus one, plus one counter that I assume goes on Bob. Yep, yep, yep. All right, Mana Crypt. Lose that flip. All right, it is a new Thalia. Um, I'm just going to cycle this for a card, I think. I'm okay with playing the Thalia without protection. Yeah, I'll do this. All right, so I'll go to combat. I'll attack with a 4-4. Four, four. 
uh, due to Noble Hierarch. My opponent can trade the Bob for it if they want, or they can trade this Fatal Push with it, or they can gain life. I'm kind of good with whatever. See if they Fatal Push at my own step. Yep, that's fine. And they're cracking the food. Okay, there's a 3-3. Three, three. This might be the turn where they're going to try to turn the corner. Stack is fine. Uh, they're just going to take one of my things. Sure. They're just uh, holding out. I win my flip. Uh, I can't cast Mirror Crusader. I don't have white, white. Oh, no, I do have white, white due to Noble Hierarch. Uh, this is really strong. This is, like, exceptionally strong. Because uh, it just doesn't give a fuck about Oko. It attacks as a 3 3. Oh, come on. Come on. That's a little disappointing. All right. So there's a looting with Dak Faden. Got discarded there. Another force. Goodbye to one of my lands. A little harder for me to cast spells now. My opponent can attempt to turn the corner here. I'm not dead this turn, but I'm real close to dead. So Aspirant puts a counter on the Ragavan. Uh, and I just have to chump block something here to stay alive. I take eight. Three, six, seven, eight. Oh, right. Sorry, I take nine. Oh, shoot, that wasn't game two. I thought that was game two. Hmm, all right. Well, GG's. Uh, that's sort of a disappointing loss. Today's video was sponsored by Topped Deck. Uh, they are the sort of all-in-one companion app slash website for Magic the Gathering. So if you need anything from card prices to a uh, sort of deck repository for all the jank you are playing, to the ability to uh, play test with some actual things and kind of drag them around if that's sort of your jam, uh, Top Deck has stuff like that here for you. Uh, consider checking them out. They're pretty cool. Okay, uh, quick addendum. I remembered that I killed my opponent on turn one, and my opponent just conceded to that. That's why I thought it was game two when it was actually game three last time around. Um, I'm going to keep this opening hand. Um, I think my opponent is going to be playing some sort of like Bazaar or Hogak sort of deck um, based on what they were playing last year around this time. Uh, nope, wrong. Okay. So my stuff is going to enter tapped. Uh, we could be playing a pseudo mirror match. My opponent has just kept a hand that just goes Archon Pass. So Mox Emerald will be my one thing for turn, and then I kind of have to decide what land... Oh, wow. Just fucking wild. I guess I'll play this tapped. It kind of sucks if this gets wastelanded, but I think my opponent would have just naked played out the wasteland. Unsure. Nope. Okay. They did not. Uh, so I'll take two here. I'm not overly concerned. Put this on human. Next turn I can play Hierarch into stuff that's better than what my opponent has. I'm fine with taking the temporary damage in the meantime. Uh, so this is tapped Wasteland into Hierarch. And this is kind of the point where I'm going to start pulling ahead of where my opponent's at. Okay, um, so they do have some functional mana. So I could get like Swords to Plow shared here, which would be pretty good. Okay, a Trop. Oh, sure. Okay, um, so my opponent is playing essentially a Bant Archon deck. I just want to Wasteland and just, like, fucking get Batter Skull or Cauldra or something. Yeah, honestly, I kind of think I do. So then I play around a Daze, which is something that, like, very realistically could be in my opponent's deck. So I'll Stoneforge. Yes. Oh, the Batter Skull's in my hand. I don't think I need Sword of Feast and Famine. Let's pick up Cauldra. Sort of Feast and Famine isn't great when there's, like, an Archon in play, and I'm also likely to just go and dump another in. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the thing that's real good against what I have going on here. I can play my own Archon, but that doesn't actually get me anywhere. I need to just get to 5 mana and put this Batter Skull in play. That's hard to do. If I play this Thalia, that makes it even harder, so I probably won't do that. Um, let's just cast this once upon a time. I'll just do it now. It might influence what land I play. Uh, Aspirant is a real plan. Aspirant plus Archon of Ameria. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll play my Wasteland and take my one damage. The next turn, I'll play Archon. 
then I'll play my Aspirant, and then I'll be good to go from there. So here's my Archon. Oh my god. Uh, I mean, I guess I can just repeat that whole thing again. Uh, play Archon, and then play Aspirant. Uh, the margins are really tight at this point. I essentially can't have anything else go wrong. Alright. Archon. And get in for one with Noble Hierarch. So I am about, about to go down to two life. And then as long as my opponent doesn't have yet another Force of Will, I stabilize. Okay. That's actually very good, because now a Force of Will doesn't beat me either. So here's the Aspirant. Oh no. Uh, the Force of Will still does beat me, right? Because I can't... Fuck! I can't play a second spell due to Archon of Ameria. Oh, that's fucking tilting. Wow. Just... Uh, fucking disbelief. I guess I can jump block and buy a turn. Uh, that's super frustrating, though. My opponent kept a Black Lotus Archon hand, then had triple force plus three cards to pitch to it. Plus a strip mine and a swords. Uh, I I don't know how I get out of this at this point. So I'm just kind of in the abyss. Any turn that I don't answer the Archon is just shit for me. I don't have swords to plowshares or anything. Ugh. Sure. All right, I lose the cavern. All right. Uh, GG. That was very frustrating. Uh, I probably won't sideboard much. Um, we're in a pseudo mirror. I want these Crusaders. That'll probably be about it. Chalice is kind of whatever. Putting it on one to shut off removal is probably good enough to keep it in. Of course, a Vigor seems medium. I think I'm just going to make that small swap here. Uh, okay. Um, I have a powerful hand that lets me do an uncounterable thing that's pretty strong on turn one. I'll absolutely keep this. Um, again, if I want to play around counter magic, I can't set up to Wasteland on turn two as well, but whatever. All right, so here's my fast mana. Here's my uncounterableness. And my Stoneforge. Uh, obviously it resolves, and I will just take the Cauldra. It is a very swift clock, and if my opponent doesn't have a Swords to Plowshares, uh, it is a damning amount of damage. All right, uh, my opponent now operates with perfect information about what my hand contains due to that Gataxian probe. And uh, my opponent is a very good player, by the way. So when a good player has perfect information about both of your hands, not good, not good for the home team. All right, so we'll see if this is just going to be like a cantrip or a removal spell or what. Okay, it is a, an ancestral. Sure, sure, sure. All right, so now I can choose to go after that Tundra, or I can just put the Cauldra into play. Again, like White Mox. White Mox would be so good. <clears throat> I, I think I'm just going to take my Ball Lightning effect here and get going with this. I'll take the 5 damage. My opponent is pretty much obligated to use their mana to answer this. And then I can Wasteland plus Luminarch Aspirant and start getting my beats on next turn. I'm good with that. And if they don't have an answer to Cauldra, well, five more damage. All right, looks like we're seeing some movement here. Oh, my opponent is going for a Collector Oop. That shuts off their own Mox. Okay. Uh, do they know I have the Wasteland? This Thalia Heretic Athar would be pretty good. Um, I'm just going to set them down to zero mana, though. And just bash in for five. I am absolutely good with that. And then next turn I can play Luminarch Aspirant, followed by Thalia Heretic Cathar, and just kind of keep the vice grips on my opponent. It feels kind of like if they're going to take this line, they really have to have, like, another white source into Source of Plowshares or something. Nope. Just... Nope. All right. Um, this is a fine draw. So, uh, let's put my opponent to two. They need to answer Cauldra this turn, or they're dead. And then I also just will have land into Luminarch Aspirant as a follow-up. Okay, yep, there's the concession. 
Uh, yep. I feel like we're in approximately the right place as far as sideboarding goes. About the only other thing I could do is just consider boarding Containment Priest as a Flash 2-2. Two -two. Um, I don't really think I want to do that, though. Um, I think my hand here is just too fair. Um, this would be a perfectly respectable legacy hand. I don't think this is a good enough vintage hand, especially on the draw. Um, same. Like, I don't really feel like this is going to win games. Try to find something powerful. Uh, I guess on five, I'm going to keep this. One once upon a time goes back, and then what's the other card that goes back? Probably Crusader just for being hard to cast here. Um, th this hand has problems in terms of mana. Yeah, you can, you can look at my hand. That's fine. It's obviously good. Again, I don't want good players having perfect information about my hand. Er, oh, okay. I am going to just cast this on my opponent's turn so that it can't be force of negationed. All right, given my opponent's wasteland, I probably just need to take this Caracas. Uh, I guess first things first, let's see if this gets Force of Willed or Force of Negationed. Does not. So let's go Artificer here and play the Stoneforge. There's a very good chance that this is just going to eat us Swords to Plowshares pretty much immediately. I am still going to take the thing that is best in the world where this doesn't just immediately get removed. Yep, that's fine. All right, you've got mana. And Archon's annoying here because it means that well, <laughs> sorry, Montolio. <laughs> what a fucking savage rip on my end. I'll just grab a sword this time. It's castable. Um, Rise and Panic Canopy is my green source. It is annoying. Um, I will just go ahead and play this. There's some worlds where I don't get just wastelanded immediately next turn. Baracus also potentially has some... Um, use against my opponent's creatures. I don't know, like, what their exact creature suite is. All right, all right. Fuck me. Also, like, mana here. The mana here is just absolutely fucking brutal. My Caracas is just going to get strip mine due to Archon. I can't hard cast the sword. I can't play Aspirant because Cavern doesn't make true white. <clears throat> Sucks. I'm going to take an attack in. If my opponent has Containment Priest, they can have my Stoneforge Mystic, but I think I need to take my little edges here. All right. Goodbye, Caracas, unfortunately. I'm down to 17. Um, that is not a live draw. Uh, so I have the ability to very quickly turn this game around, but I, I need mana. All right. See what uh, nonsense my opponent can do now that they have three mana. All right. Looks like I'm just taking another hit. All right, cool. There's a horizon canopy. Just keep bashing in. All right. There's there's a punish. All right. Here it's broken here. I believe that's only like a one of in these lists. Oh, okay. A time walk on top of that. All right, cool. Well, let's let's scoop it up here. Let's move on to the next one. All right, after a 20-minute wait in the queue, and I'm not exaggerating, uh, we're back for round three. Uh, my Once Upon a Time can probably hit me a land drop, in which case I have a Stoneforge and a Chalice on one, or, like, a couple other options here. I think I keep this hand. It's a little awkward if my Once Upon a Time gets countered. Okay. We're potentially playing against some sort of blue deck. Okay. Maybe bug. Maybe doomsday. Alright, probably bug. So I'll go ahead and end step once upon a time. So I played around force of negation. So that uh that did not hit a colored land. I'll take the wasteland here. But that's super fucking awkward in the face of Death Rage Shaman. Alright. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so now the only castable card in my hand is Chalice of the Void. Just, uh, just kind of on par with how this league is going. At least I didn't get dazed to add insult to injury. Oh, I'm sorry. It was just Force of Vigor. Cool, cool. Just, just not a good day. Just absolutely not a good showing for this deck here. 
Oh, like Le <laughs> Leovold me, so these wastelands suck even more than they already did. All right. Um. Yep. Next next game, I guess. Like, I don't know. I guess technically, I could still just rip a white source and a Stoneforge Mystic single hair and handedly wins the game. Um. I waited for. 20 minutes in the queue for this match, so might as well try to make it work. Like, by no means have I played perfectly in this league, but holy fuck have I gotten punished. We just... Ugh. I'll take three. Um, my opponent left up this mana. Well, alright. So I will attempt a Stoneforge Mystic, and I think if this gets countered, I, I'm just dead. All right, it didn't. That's the good news. I'll grab Cauldra. Oh, excuse me. My opponent left up a colored mana rather than attacking it with this Deathrite Shaman, so that means that their last card could just be something like a Fatal Push. Nope, okay, cool. Take five here. Even if I stabilize the board from these, the Deathrite Shaman is still just an absolute pain in the ass in terms of, like, bleeding me to death. Uh, okay. All right. Um, what do I want this other card to be? Probably just Aspirant over Thalia. I just want to grind this value over time. And I'll just start stacking up my counters here. Alright, so... There are no creatures in the graveyard for my opponent to eat using their Tropical Island and Deathrite Shaman. Um, we'll see what they can do as a follow-up here. Oh. I mean, yeah. So here's my Cauldra. I have Dismember... What are, we, what are we working with here that makes this make sense? Because Fatal Push doesn't do it. They're waiting to pay costs on something. I take three either way, because I'll kill the Armagoyf and then put a creature into the grave, or I'll kill the old and then I'll put a creature into the graveyard. Yeah, I think I'm just going to get the Tarmogoyf out of the way. That's something that can get big and annoying later. And in some worlds where my opponent ends up like putting an Oko or something into play. I think I just want to clear the battlefield of some of these larger threats. <clears throat> I'm going to set a draw step stop on my turn. I guess the reason to kill the Leovold first is to get rid of Underground C without allowing my opponent to draw a card. Yeah, I should have gotten rid of the Leovold for that reason. I'm going to try to draw a white land here that doesn't cost me life. Oh, fuck. Ugh. I'm obviously not playing well. I am super tilted. I have spent about an hour in queue waiting for my matches total between these three rounds. I get my head out of my butt here. I think I, I think I just punted this game. Oh, that's super frustrating. Yeah, I think I just have to hold back. I think I have to wasteland this underground sea, give my opponent a card. They're not going for eating. Guess I'll just hold out then. All right, that's fine. Um, Once Upon a Time is kind of a dead card here. I good with attacking with a Luminarch Aspirant? That's a 4-4. Four, four. Not really. Yeah. I think I'm just going to stay on the defensive here. My opponent makes a move with this Deathrite Shaman and tries to eat something for damage. I have to Wasteland this. Yeah. So I'll take two here. When everything's said and done. And then it's pretty bad for me if my opponent just finds another black source. Okay, they didn't. Uh, time walk is a good magic card. See what my opponent can do with their extra turn. It might just be an explorer for them. Not going to cast this once upon a time for life. <clears throat> Alright. Now I good attacking. I'm just gaining ground every turn here. I do need to close this game before my opponent does something to really pull ahead. I attack in with one creature. I'd like chump block and take one damage back. I'm gonna put a counter here. I will crash in for six. That drops my opponent to 13. The difference of one point of life should mean very little in most circumstances. I'm gonna go ahead and play this out, tax my opponent's mana, and make like the collector oof and leave all the tax invalidated in. So now I have all three of my opponent's creatures covered and I'm taxing their mana. Ooh, they have mana. This three green mana. Endurance? It is endurance. I assume they're not going to nuke either graveyard. Yeah. 
Yeah, I might have to randomly lose a creature this turn and then hang back again. Kind of sucks because if I take a single point of damage, life's bad. Black mana represents removal. It's not great for me. Yeah. All right. I'm dead. I just lost this game because I didn't kill the Leobold. And I killed the Tarmogoyf, and then I just fucking punted from there. That's frustrating. I have to... I probably should have attacked a Collector Oof. I, like... Like, these blocks are obligated, otherwise I die. So I found it could have put me to one instead. Doesn't matter, like, they're gonna win either way. Oh, they had better lines. I guess I can't complain, because I fucking punted all over this one. I go to two if I play something like Athalia. And then I'm just dead. Uh, I'm just gonna concede, my opponent's going slowly here. Um, I'll bring in a couple of Mirroring Crusaders, and I guess I'll bring in a Pithing Needle for an Oko randomly. And I don't think my Force of Vigors are super potent here, and I can probably go down on this Outland Liberator. Um, hasn't been particularly great, but then again, I haven't gotten paired against shops or something like that where this is really gonna shine. Man, like... I, I just have to mulligan this, right? If my Once Upon a Time whiffs a colored source, I just lose the game instantly. This also doesn't really feel like a good hand. It's it's just not fast. I don't want to give the blue deck time to set up. Like, the Deathrite Shaman hands or the Wasteland hands are going to obliterate this keep. Better to go to five. Try to get a turn one Archon or something like that. I don't know that it is. Ugh. I think, I'm gonna, I think I'm just going to get rid of the Wasteland, because if my opponent has a Wasteland of their own, um, it is just super devastating for me to not have the next land. Uh, my plan here is to just curve Uncounterable Thalia into Uncounterable Archon and hope that wins the game. All right. All right, do your thing. Sure, sure, sure. So off a Sapphire, my opponent can brainstorm, then fetch, and kind of perfectly sculpt their hand with the full information of my own hand. Alright, you've got another land. You have, a, like, a Death Rent Shaman? You do have a Death Rent Shaman, sure. Oh my god. Card is in my deck, right? Card is in my deck? Can I see it sometime? Alright, Mirren Crusader is pretty legit. It will also be uncounterable later due to my Cavern of Souls. That's... That's pretty legit. There are currently no lands in the graveyard for this Deathrite Shaman. That's some good news. Never mind. Armagoyf, sure. I think I will let that just kind of sit in play for a turn, and I want to put my Archon into play first. I really hope that my opponent won't just randomly counter a Mox Pearl. I don't think they will. Alright. Archon. <clears throat> I will get this down to kind of discourage my opponent, and then I will work on Mirren Crusader plus Luminarch Aspirant to uh, just take over this game. Okay, like... Are you just draining me here? Okay, it's it's resolved. Or are you just going to, like, end step, do some sort of fatal push shenanigans? Nope, okay. Alright, um, that's not bad. That means my Mirren Crusader is still uncounterable. All right, Tower Wife comes in for three. I'll happily take that. I'm down to 15. We'll see if my opponent... Nope, that's all I got. Um, I only get one spell this turn. I will make it Mirren Crusader. I just don't want to take um, extra hits from the Tarmogoyf here. I also should have attacked with Athalia. Oh, my head is not fully in the game right now. I'm super on tilt. Okay, we're seeing a move from my opponent. Opposition agent. Okay, maybe it was a good thing I didn't attack with a Thalia. Um, I would have lost the Thalia mid-combat if my opponent double-blocked. Yeah, maybe that works out for the better. Alright. Opponent opting not to uh, muck with my lands here. I'm good with that. I get one spell. I will make it Luminarch Aspirant. Do I just go all in? I think I I think I play this one more conservative. Like I can just like try to Mirror Crusader kill my opponent in two-ish turns. 
But there's some portion of the time where my opponent just goes, like, drain you, drain you, Tarmogoyf in opposition agent, attack in successfully, and it ends up being bad for me. I think I'm just going to hold the ground and clock my opponent in the air for 3, then 5, then 7, and call that good. Okay. My opponent tanked there for, like, a minute for some reason. I have no idea why. So they'll go down to 12. I've already played my one spell, hence I can't play that. Okay, my opponent just concedes, sure. Um, I know about Opposition Agent now. Make some own flash threats of my own, kind of interesting. Um, this card's not looking great in this league, but I think it's better than, like, Random Containment Priest. Like, this thing is occasionally going to be better, and occasionally it is just going to absolutely wreck a mox. All right, I am looking at a mediocre hand here, um, if I'm being honest. Thalia gets outclassed by a lot of my opponent's cards. Noble Hierarch is not nearly as good as a Mox. My Archon is going to be slow. I don't have a Cavern. That said, I still think I just keep this hand. It's improved by a considerable number of draws. Like Cavern, Wastelands, Mox, and Lotus all make this hand just so much better. Um... I mean, I guess we'll cast that. Uh, okay, Stoneforge and Cavern are both extremely good. I think given that I'm land-heavy already, I am just going to take the Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, and we'll just try to brute force our way through counter spells. Alright, Noble Hierarch has resolved, I mean, as expected. See if my opponent is going to use a removal spell or something on it at end step. Yep, they are. Fatal push. That's fine for me. Um, I'll kind of have to decide what I want to do on my next turn. Alright, yeah, I mean, we can make that trade. That's fine. If you don't play a threat, I will just wasteland you right back. If you did not play a threat, accordingly, I will just wasteland you right back. I will wait till my opponent's upkeep, though. Alright, now I'll fire off this wasteland. We can play this game of mutual, mutually assured destruction, and then you top deck a death right shaman, and I fucking cry. I did not cry. Hello! Hello, fucking Black Lotus. Thank you. Thank you for for joining the cast party here. Um, I'm going to opt to play two spells rather than uh, just play an Archon. I think going Thalia into Stoneforge Mystic on an empty board is just stronger. Uh, we'll see what my opponent has to say about this. All right, good shit. Yes, Cauldra. All right, this Black Lotus card is a hell of a drug. Let's, uh, let's draw that some more. God fucking damn it. God. I'm just very upset right now. Now this whole Calder plan is ruined. I'm gonna junk the Stoneforge, keep the Thalia. Um, I mean, you're a card late. I'm not... Super thrilled about putting this Mana Crypt in play right now for some reasons. Um, primarily that it's a real win condition for my opponent, especially if they just like top deck land in a Tarmogoyf or something like that. Um, if I can get another turn without my opponent playing something and just put an Archon into play, um, I think I will be able to race most things that my opponent does. Um, but this is kind of a crucial turn where if my opponent draws the land, I am just in trouble. Go tails with this. Heads. We'll pay. Yes. You're gonna force a vigor me. Make me lose this mana crypt. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. I mean, that is oddly a rather good draw right now. It pays for itself off Tabernacle. It allows my Thalia to hit harder. I'm fine with this. Thalia bashes in for three. Oh, and it goes to 14. I honestly think my opponent is favored in this game at this point. Oh. Oh. That's kind of rough. Just a Cataxian probe for straight up life. Alright. Noble Hierarch will pay for itself. Savannah will pay for Thalia. More, more Archons. Just oops all Archons. I get just a couple more turns to try to do something here to beat my opponent. Like, they're, they're in the world where they can start playing things that just stonewall this Thalia. They can also just remove it. Yeah, that's, that's the issue. 
All right. So I'll pay for my stuff. And eventually I can just put an Archon into play. I would like to cast this on one. It is going to be exceptionally hard to do that. I think I'm just passing the turn here. Now my opponent does have to pay the, tar the tax on their own Tarmogoyf. So that might lock down their mana for a while. Uh, this process is going to repeat for a while. I'll just pay for both. Uh, more other Thalia. Not doing anything for quite some time. Exciting game of magic. We're also playing towards a timeout for the third match in a row. I guess we didn't, weren't really playing towards a timeout with Montolio. All right. That's fine. I guess I'll put this on an Archon. I could opt to get rid of my Thalia and play Archon next turn and then start getting there in the air with a Flyer. I do not know that that is better than just trying to wait and draw a land. I don't think I am going to sacrifice this Thalia when my opponent is like this obviously mana screwed. I can't cast that once upon a time. <laughs> Due to my own Thalia attacks. Alright, pay, pay for your card. Alright, my opponent's in business now. So now they can cast things like cantrips that were stuck in their hand previously. We cast another Tarmogoyf. Yeah. That's what this is going to be based on this attack. Just 100% is another Tarmogoyf. How the fuck am I supposed to beat two Tarmogoyfs? I just don't. I just don't. Is the answer without drawing like a Stoneforge or something. I guess I have to like put an Archon into play and then maybe I draw Aspirant. That's another line towards victory. Um, but I, I think I just have to take this block here. Alright, they're going for Ancestral. That is not the Tarmogoyf that I was expecting. Okay, they're just straight up discarding cards. Discarding Opposition Agent and Leovold. Pay with this in case I draw another land. Ooh. Do I want to attack for one? Or do I want to wasteland my opponent? I probably just want to wasteland my opponent and play Archon. Archon's still lethal in three turns due to Noble Hierarch. The one point of damage doesn't matter. I'll play this Archon. My opponent will fetch with Misty in response. Alright. Do I want to Wasteland Tabernacle? Or do I want to go after Underground Sea? Pretty easy for me to like chump block and kill Tarmogoyf. I think I'm going to fuck up this Tabernacle. But I'll use it to make my opponent pay for their Tarmogoyf first. I'll get hit for 5. Going to 9. Kind of as expected. <sighs> yeah. Cool, cool. That's just brutal. Alright, opponent is fetching to thin their deck here. The land will enter tapped. Ooh, they do have a basic forest. I'll take five more going to four. And we'll see if my opponent has something else damning for the second main phase. Okay, it's just a wasteland. So I'll take out their tabernacle and kind of free up my mana a bit. Alright. If I have mana to work with, I can only cast one spell. It'll probably just be another Archon. They're uncounterable. Bash for three after counting the Noble Hierarch trigger. I, uh, just, uh, every, every turn, I just feel like I have gotten absolutely fucked this league. All right, uh, GG's. All right, um, I'm going to he keep a hand that I think is kind of mediocre. Um, once upon a time, hopefully finds a second threat and makes this reasonable. Can also just be pitched a Force of Vigor if my opponent is on a shop's deck, uh, which they are not. Alright, do your thing. Kind of had a hand that was respectable versus shops. Um, or maybe dredge. Sorry, uh, shops are a blue deck. I need to look for a Once Upon a Time here rather than use this to remove the 4-4. Four -four. Okay, there is a Wasteland. We're still playing Magic. I think I am at a disadvantage, though. Um, that's a quite good draw. This, I think, puts me in a position to potentially just... Um, I'll just hold this in hand. The Stoneforge puts me in a situation where I can beat the Hollow One by grabbing, like, a Batter Skull or a... Uh, a Cauldra. Uh, double Creeping Chill is rough. 
Uh, so I go to 14, and then I go to 7. Uh, yeah, maybe we're not just gonna beat this. Uh, fuck. Uh, Icarid exiles Stinkweed Imp. My opponent a attacks for 7, 8, 9. My opponent attacks for lethal. I have to chump block with a Stoneforge Mystic, uh, at which point I can't really win. Cool. Cool. Alright. Four Containment Priests. In. Force of Vigor for Hollow One specifically is acceptable. Mirren Crusader is acceptable. Um, Order of Feast and Famine feels too slow. Chalice doesn't feel super relevant. I really just need to, like, land a turn one hate bear of some kind and then beat Hollow Ones. I think Needle for Bazaar is good. Maybe Mirren Crusader doesn't work out. Like, the White White's hard, and some of these other things, like Thalia and Archon, are just going to have a higher impact on the game most of the time. This is out to Hollow Ones. So it's Force of Vigor. Uh, maybe I go down, like, Noble Hierarchs. Lowers my green count for Force of Vigor. But I want Aspirants to outscale Hollow Ones. I want Stoneforge to find things that beat Hollow Ones. Thalia's can stop some things that my opponent does. They're mediocre. This is maybe okay. Black Lotus. Yes. Deep. Alright, opponent going for a Serum Powder. This is a little awkward. Um, so I'll go for Lotus. I'll play my Containment Priest. And I have Stoneforge Mystic as backup. I can't actually put in the creature that I am about to grab. Um, as of right now, but it is potentially quite good. Like, if I don't have to Wasteland and then I just rip a White Source, I have a lot of incoming damage. I do have to Wasteland. Um, let's get rid of this zone. Uh, Cabal Therapy, Icarid, Stinkweed. Okay, Hollow One. Just play another so I can get another card with my Force of Vigor. Yeah, Justice. End of turn. Select two Hollow Ones. Outland Liberator. Goodbye. Please don't force a will me. It will just completely break my fucking spirit. Okay. It didn't get force a willed. Rip the white source. I mean, I did not rip a white source. Another mana source, though. That's fine. Play strip mine. Wasteland that so my opponent can't dig towards stuff. I'll bash in for three. Opponent's down to 17. My opponent, like, does have some dredgers and stuff. They can use... Uh, Cabal Therapy at some point. Well, if they get a creature into play, they can use Cabal Therapy to take this Cauldra, but they can't just, like, get an Icarid right now due to Containment Priest. Okay, cool. Oh, I forgot a Grafter's Cage. Just missed that while sideboarding. Uh, goodbye, Noble Hierarch, I guess. Do I want to get rid of Thalia's on the draw? Like, is Noble Hierarch better than Thalia on the draw to enable, like, a turn 2 Archon? Maybe. Not 100% sure there, without having played the matchup. I also could play a couple more Force of Vigors to better play around Hollow Ones, because that's something that I'm scared of after, like, a Containment Priest or a Grafdigger's Cage gets online. I don't know. I could do, like, this. All right, or not. I don't, I don't think it matters too much. Like, I have six answers to Hollow Ones already. Um, I, so I Needle Bazaar, and then I have something that can answer Hollow Ones. Um, if my opponent just goes ham with dredging on turn one, though, uh, it's not actually great for me. I think I keep. It's borderline, though. Oh my gosh, it's bizarre. Shock Pikachu face. So the world where, like, double or triple Golgari Grave Troll or equivalent ends up going to Graveyard is scary. Oh, it's just a Shambling Shell. Hot damn. That's good. Uh, that's less good for me. Alright, that's a prized amalgam. Am I dealing with hollow ones? I am. Alright, it's just one. So now the question is, do I pithing needle and stop every bazaar but expose myself to counterspell? Or do I just wasteland, but if my opponent has another bazaar, it's devastating. I think I play the pithing needle. With the sun human, an attempt to pithing needle bazaar. Can't, can't win. Absolutely cannot catch a break in this league. All right, so here's a bizarre activation. The Shambling Shell is currently my opponent's only dredger. Um, I guess that's not bad. I'm going to take four, going down to 16. I'm actually doing okay. 
Um, that might qualify as doing well. We get to blow up Bazaar. I'll play a Mana Crypt, which I don't love doing, but I think I just need to power this card out a turn sooner. Now the question is, do I just want to use this to get rid of the Hollow One immediately, or do I want to try to grind value out of it? I think I just want to blow this up. Um, the reason being that in addition to just blowing up the Hollow One, it also nukes a bridge from below. This leaves my opponent without any Drayed Treasures in the graveyard. So they would need a third Bazaar. Or they would need the final Bazaar because one of those is in graveyard as well. Alright, I lost my flip. Down to 13. Um, I guess I will play this now. There's some things I can hit and cast immediately. Like a Containment Priest, for example. Uh, yeah, I can play Athalia now, so I probably should just play a threat now rather than get the slightly more powerful Archon. Like, the Archon does more. It, like, stops the Bazaar from activating immediately, for example, uh, is better against Icarid. But, like, with my own Mana Crypt in play, and I'm at 13, I think I just need to go. I'm already going to have some of my mana tied up in cycling these Horizon Canopies anyway. Alright, opponent has no plays. I've lost my flip again. Uh, Sapphire's not great. Uh, let's cycle this land. I have found more mana. So I will just play out both of these. And attack for two. Um, opponent is maybe winning the race currently versus my mana crypt. Alright, they don't have anything to do. Not surprising. Fails never fails. Told ya. More Horizon Canopy. Um, let's cycle and see if I draw anything. Nope, just oops all lands. I'll knock my opponent down to 13. Um, I am just not drawing any relevant cards here. Um, if I don't draw anything relevant, my opponent is only two turns away from just hard discarding and then being able to get something going again. Ugh, I lost another flip. Okay, that's a real card. Um, I still will just cycle this, though. Uh, that other Thalia is not doing anything right now. This one is, though. This one means that, like, Icarids are going to enter tapped. Why is the Amalgam normally enter tapped? Yeah. Okay. Now I probably win versus my own mana crypt, but my opponent gets a hard discard next turn. I lost another flip. I will cast this for a whopping three mana. I can't play a Stoneforge this turn. I guess I just take Aspirant, and Aspirant guarantees that I can kill next turn. Six this turn, seven, eight next turn. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Play this. Do my Aspirant thing. Um, because of Contagion specifically, I guess I put this on Thalia. Uh, well, I guess they're both Thalia. I, Guardian of Thraven Thalia. OG Thalia. And uh, I think that does it here. Yeah, my opponent junks a thug. I go to one after losing all of those flips. Alright. Put a counter on a Thalia. And crash in for lethal. Go team. I have won a match and gotten on the leaderboard. Woohoo. Alright, um, final round here. Um, this hand is really mediocre. So, like, I have five mana sources. I can do a turn one Aspirant or Liberator, but I don't know that that's actually good enough to keep a Vintage hand based on. I would really prefer a Hate Bear based hand, and I don't really count this as a Hate Bear. I count this as kind of a weird removal spell. I think I'm going to go ahead and Mulligan. And this one has no colored mana sources. Play a Batter's Skull on turn two and then draw a whole bunch of dead cards. I think that's a Mulligan. Okay, this is a this is a fucking vintage hand. Uh, I keep this. So Lotus casts Archon, and then I have two mana remaining. Two mana does not cast a three mana card. I know that uh, is shocking. I think I keep Once Upon a Time and try to find a two drop that I can play, throwing these two cards back, and just go for the absolute highest velocity thing that I can do. All right, we're playing against another blue deck. Uh, we'll do. 
I, I would let my opponent um, force a negation my once upon a time, considering that I'm about to play a Lotus. All right. That would have let me play a second three drop. Ooh, we are getting a response. Our underground C into, do you have like a fluster? You do have a fluster. Goodbye, once upon a time. Now I'll play out some mana. Yeah. 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 We're all in on Archon, baby. Um, so I will I will need to draw like a stone forge or another piece of gas or something here. Otherwise, what I have going on uh, potentially is just not going to be good enough. Although this is starting to look like combo. Like I might be playing against like Doomsday. Oh, that's great. Uh, finishing the thought, I might be playing against something like Doomsday, where um, this Archon is, while not an a hundred percent a free win, very very good at slowing them down. All right, there's a fetch. Okay. All right, yeah. Love seeing tap lands. We might just be playing against Bug. Yeah. Okay. Bug Bug confirmed. So the next question is like, what do I want to do regarding the Aspirant counter? Do I want to put it on Aspirant and try to have Aspirant attack, or do I just want to keep putting it on the Flyer? Um. So that my Flyer can always attack in. Uh, in case my opponent plays something like a Tarmogoyf. I think I'm going to take my one extra point of damage this turn. And get in with both creatures. There's five damage. Putting my opponent to ten. And then I will wasteland them. Take them off of um, green mana without using Deathrite Shaman. Sort of a light chokehold. This is very much escapable. Fair. Um, but I'm still getting to attack in pretty freely here. So I put a counter on Aspirant, then it can attack in versus Collect Roof. So I'll turn off auto yields. I'll attack with both. I'll see if my opponent just chomps. I don't think they will. I've been wrong before, though. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they go to four. So my Archon is lethal in the air next turn. Okay, so that is a that is a brainstorm. They potentially just brainstorm lock themselves out of this game if they miss here. Um, they don't have access to green mana currently to gain life with Deathrite Shaman. Um, but that was not an immediate concession there, so they may still be alive. Really? Really? Sure. I, I will go to 17. What absolute fuckery do you have here? Okay, that, that qualifies. So they're still looking at the same cards from Brainstorm, right? Or no, they would have gotten one deeper now. All right, so here's green mana. Okay, yep. All right, um, Crusader in, Needle in, Force of Vigor out, uh, maybe one Outland Liberator out. Sounds about right. All right, so I don't, uh, I don't mulligan the hands that have Black Lotus. Right, this, this is how this deck works. Um, I, I will keep this hand. I think it leaves some things to be desired, but um, Lotus is a hell of a drug. I can do something like Stoneforge plus Aspirant on one. That's totally reasonable. Sure. Another one. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah, I guess that's happening. All right, I picked up another Stoneforge. Um, that's actually really interesting. I'll cast this, and it's probably just grabbing me a land. Crypt mine is weird. I don't think I like it with the Deathrite Shaman in play. I think I'm just going to take the Savannah here. All right, so I will go Savannah. We'll play Lotus. This is absolutely devastating if it's countered. All right, it isn't. Good. I will attempt a Stoneforge Mystic. All right, it resolves. I will pick up Cauldra. I will now attempt a second Stoneforge Mystic so that one removal spell doesn't stop me from getting a Cauldra. Um, so the thing that I am now hoping to dodge is a Wasteland from my opponent. Because that's, like, Wasteland into, like, Deathrite Shaman activate is incredibly good here. So now we're just playing the Can You Beat a Cauldra game. Uh, opponent can find, like, some sort of Abrupt Decay or Assassin's Trophy or Fatal Push type card. Uh, that was bottom-bottom with Preordain, so that was a miss. Okay, that's, uh, that's gonna find them an answer. Probably going to be like an Oko. Although, honestly, I might end up outpacing that. One goes to 16 for playing that. 
I guess there's also like tabernacle that could happen. So if my opponent has Oko, it's like potentially better to just like put in Batter Skull end of turn and then play Cauldra. But if my opponent got like a tabernacle and is trying to like get me that way, it's better to just take my damage now. I think I'm just gonna like kind of around the Oko here to the best of my ability. All right, I'll take two. That's fine. This, this game is not going to be decided on life total. This game is going to be decided based on whatever fuckery they just put on top of their deck with Vampiric Tutor. I just don't know how good this card is going to be. Uh, time walk's annoying. But it's happening. Please don't time walk plus Ogo. Okay, cool. Uh, that was one bottom, one top that time around. Uh, they're going for more mana. White? Is this just a random color? Alright, um... Collector Oof takes you off a mana. I think I'm good with that. Okay. That's annoying. That makes me significantly worse versus an Oko. Um, I'll put in my Batter Skull now. I can still put in the Hasty Cauldra on my turn. Alright, that's mana. Uh, I guess it could also be... No, they wouldn't hardcast a Force of Vigor. Uh, well. Okay, so they destroyed my Germ? What what just happened? Okay, no, that did go down. Sure, sure, sure. All right. Um, this is a nuisance now. I activate this. Put in Cauldra. Now there's the question of like, do I just kill this Planeswalker? I probably do. It's close. I think I'm gonna lose this game if my opponent just has an Oko caliber card though. Um. Again, like, we'll we'll see. Uh, okay. Um, it's not an Oko, but it's of similar annoyingness. Um, these mocks that I'm drawing are not super helpful here. Aspirin is my play. I'll just put this on my germ. And I'll send this at Grist. Um, note my critter does have trample. Alright, Grist is dead. I have another Planeswalker. <laughs> Okay, Aspirant's down. That's not that big of a deal. Alright. There's more mana. Do you have like a Tarmogoyf? Hey, Bob. That's fine. I'm not worried about that. Um, I can't play this Archon. My Moxon don't do anything. My Noble Hierarch does something. That has text. Albeit not particularly good text, but it has text. Crash in with this Germ. Make it bigger. Uh, yeah, that's basically half of my opponent's life total. Um, this Collector Oof is not particularly good against me, but it is definitely stopping me from doing things that matter right now. Uh, there's a lot of worlds where my opponent dies to their, oh, Tabernacle. God damn it. Well, I guess Tabernacle's super weird, right? Okay, uh, Gush is weird. Gush means that if my opponent plays Tabernacle, they end up losing a lot of their stuff. Their Mox Jet is off. And they can, uh, they can do weird things like sacrifice their Collector Oof, huh? Mm, yeah, that's all sorts of weird. I mean, I'm just going to keep Aldra and Noble Hierarch and get rid of my Stone Forges. Alright. I guess I can use Noble Hierarch to pay for one of these. Pay for this one... I'll take a life to keep one stone forge, and I'll junk one. Ooh, a wasteland. Don't mind if I do. So this is seven incoming damage. I assume at the minimum my opponent needs to throw the dark confidant under the bus. Oh. Oh wow, they're keeping the bob. Dangerous. So my opponent's gonna take four here. So these moxen are now live again. Which means I don't care about my opponent's tabernacle. So I could cast... Okay, yeah, my opponent concedes there. Um, we ended up overall 2-3 in this league. Um, I made I made some errors here. Um, I was super frustrated. I had like a 12-minute wait time, then a, I think a 20-minute wait time, and then an 18-minute wait time or something like that for my first three rounds. Um, I played poorly accordingly. It was just super frustrating to like have an opponent who played super slowly followed by that just enormous waste wait time like it took me i think four hours to record this league because of the just huge wait times that was happening between rounds 
like uh, uh as far as the deck list itself goes it felt medium like the deck list itself is not bad but the awkwardness of the green cards is very real so in, a lot of times these hate bears decks uh, in both vintage and legacy end up having kind of dubious mana because you're playing a lot of cards that don't produce like true white or don't produce both of your colors. So if we look at this, 11 of the lands in this deck at some times are not going to produce green mana for some of these green cards. And Cavern is frequently not going to work towards mana pips like Force of Vigor or Once Upon a Time in particular. So there were a lot of times where I got cards that just like absolutely got stuck in my hand. Um, I did not do anything other than use this as a disenchant with this card, I don't think. Um, I don't know that I'm feeling the green in this deck list. Uh, like, I don't know that this is better than other white equivalents of the deck. I I know that I didn't necessarily have the like best league where this is going to be good. Like, I didn't get paired against shops to see the power of this. Um, but I guess like the only other thing I did was like randomly kill a bridge from below uh, which i guess is something i was super impressed by cauldra though i will say that vintage is kind of a removal light format so if you start with something like a thalia or an archon and then you end up like playing a luminar aspirant or a stoneforge afterwards to kind of like be the nail in the coffin so your opponent doesn't have a lot of time to draw out of it um that seems pretty reasonable to me um I, I think the best way to describe this deck is like the the delta, the difference between my good and bad hands was incredibly high. Like my good hands where like I drew Black Lotus or like a Mox Pearl or something like that. Like those those hands were awesome. And then a lot of the other times it just it just felt like I was playing Legacy with this deck too much of the time. Um, as far as changes I would make, I'm not entirely sure. I feel like the green cards were medium. That's that's kind of my my starting point. And I I feel like I didn't get a good showing from this deck. I don't think I would like cut the green from this deck immediately. Like I would definitely play another league and like try to get a better feel for it. Um but just like kind of based on what I saw here, I'm not overly confident in what's going on. Um if I'm going to make any changes to the sideboard, I might just want another hard for adjusting fair blue for times where I don't want something like Force of Vigor or the Outland Liberators because I kind of felt like some of those just had to stay in the deck to fill slots because I didn't have a lot of things to bring in like just another fair like Marin Crusader-esque card or another hate bear like a Spirit of the Labyrinth or something like that is not crazy but Spirit of the Labyrinth isn't a human kind of stretches the mana um that's kind of where my head is at anyway I hope you all enjoyed despite the fact that I punted a decent amount and was slightly frustrated now, if you did click the like button, it's the easiest way to support my content for free. Have a great rest of the day, and best of luck uh, with your eternal weekend testing if you are doing that. See ya.